and welcome back to another Continuous X podcast where we try to solve for X in the SDLC equation. I am here with Mike Fitzerker, my co-host and colleague again. And in this episode, we're pleased to welcome back our guest, Tom Hance, Director of Container Security at New Vector. Welcome back, Tom. Hey, thank, thanks, Rick, for having me back on the on the show. Great, thanks. Um, in, in containerized environments, uh, effective network communication between the containers plays a crucial role. And I think we started to get into that last time. Um, and that ensures a seamless application performance and security data, uh, secure data exchange. And um, so that makes managing these uh, communications essential. Uh, with that in mind, um, let's talk about some best practices then for securing and managing network communications within that container and that within that cluster. Um, how can organizations address these potential network bottlenecks or performance issues in that context? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I think, you know, we have to recognize that containers themselves are, you know, an ephemeral technology. Mm -hmm. Things move, change, get stood up, tore down quickly. It's not really humanly manageable function. You know, you can't create firewall rules fast enough to protect any boundary uh, with, uh, you know, traditional tools. In fact, traditional tools for uh, securing uh, containerized environments simply don't work um, because they're they're not built for that. But if you look at containerized environments um, and compare them to the wired networks of the world, if you well, if you look at well, the wired networks of, of the world from the Pentagon on out, every boundary, every network boundary uh, between tenant, command, uh, work group. Uh, compute silo is protected by uh, a, a network gateway that understands layer seven, understands packet flows. Um, and why do they do this? Um, it understands uh, applications. They do this simply because it works. It's a great security tool to tie the application use uh, to the user and say what is permissible and what is not. Uh, leads them closer to a zero trust model than what they might have if they didn't have that kind of technology. In a microservice world, best practice is to apply very similar controls to your containerized networks. Understand what is in the packets. What is you can't just blindly assume that because of a port label, everything is protected. <laughs> looks like it's protected, but you really have to know. You have to delve in and do networking at layer seven with that packet visibility. That's not been available and uh, uh, in, uh, you know, from most network security platforms designed for containers today. So uh, Tom, when you talk about layer seven, you're actually talking about the actual uh, application to say database um, instruction that comes from the application. So we're talking about, you know, select all from the employee table or or something to that effect. Whereas you, you're saying that you can't rely on the actual port for a particular database that it listens on. You actually look, have to look at the payload itself to ensure that it's legitimate um, and it's not trying to, you know, penetrate your environment in order to hop, skip and jump and, and around and, you know, um, hack your network. Yes, I'm, I'm saying that you really, you can't guess with networks in a, you know, in the days of, uh, of port spoofing mm -hmm. and more, the more sophisticated attacks that happen in networks. You have to know the content at all times and be in control and be in line in a position to protect the data as it traverses each boundary point between containers to make sure the applications are per permitted. When I say applications are permitted, you can't just assume based on a port label that DNS is, is the application protocol being transferred simply because of a label that says number 53. You have, you have to use a protocol decoder, identify the traffic, and then validate that the traffic that is traversing that boundary between containers is clean from attack. And in order to do that, you really have to have visibility inside the packet or deep packet inspection, something that, um, you know, New Vector offers and possibly some other companies are going to raise to the occasion 
and and provide. But my recommendation would be to get away from layer three and four controls that we used in the 1990s with wired networks and move to modern day compute technology to protect containerized environments that involves um, the, the use of deep packet inspection and inline controls on that network. Well, how does it, know, I'm sorry, Mike, how does it know, you know, does it, do you train your network to know between service X and service Y, um, this is the type of traffic I should have and any anomaly from that should should raise issues or, or isolate it, et cetera? Which good question, Rick. I mean, as opposed to scanning a network, which is kind of after the fact, um, let's make sure what we put together is good. We um, at New Vector, we use behavioral learning at the application layer in deep packet inspection to understand what normalized traffic behaviors are on a connection basis across your entire service portfolio, and then to lock that down into a zero trust policy set so that anything anomalous or anything that breaks the rules can be blocked in line before it can damage a, um, a target container asset. Now. Yeah, I've always heard this in context of more uh, zero trust architecture where, but I, it, that's also also been, I believe, more the responsibility of the container or the developer to identify and verify that this traffic is coming from its right. So it, uh, what seems to be coming, what, what seems to you, you're referring to most more of a, a architectural layer that validates that that kind of communication based on definitions or automation versus having it be up to the individual container so that that actually if if i'm hearing that correctly that actually is pretty good and that the container doesn't have to then do two things at once it can just can again focus on what it needs to do and let a layer or uh, maybe an it, i don't know if that's part of the control plane or something like that that it would then handle this kind of identification or misidentification the, the platform, yeah, well, I mean that's close. the The platform, uh, the platform learns normalized traffic behaviors and considers application protocol. Let's say that a specific service is supposed to use MongoDB as its database, and then um, someone tries to use Redis alternatively. Um, depending on the protection mode, um, we may just alert you that someone has broken the rules. However, in a production environment where you don't want people to be able to break rules, um, someone that tried to use Redis when MongoDB is the only thing permitted would be the connection would be terminated. The packets would be dropped. The connection would never be made. And therefore, the target of this anomalous behavior using the wrong application protocol would be prevented. We're really shifting our you know, DevSecOps process from detect and patch, which we know historically has not been effective, uh, to a protect first um, uh, approach where we use zero trust to assure that it is either permitted or denied. And if it's denied, there's a deny all at the end of the list meaning that if you don't have explicit permission to connect using the MongoDB or the Redis application protocol, that connection request will be terminated in between container pairs. This is unique in the industry. It's something that you know New Vector developed six and a half years ago. And uh, we're hoping that as a best practice, most customers consider this as uh, you know looking for this type of technology in any product-based select to uh, protect their containerized workloads. Tom, that's fantastic. And for those interested, uh, Tom and I did a webinar uh, a few months back uh, regarding this, and Tom goes in, in depth about um, this particular uh, technology advantage that New Victor brings to the table. So I commend it to our listeners and our viewers uh, to go check out that webinar. Um, but in this particular context, uh, thank you very much for listening to um, this podcast. Uh, stay tuned um, for 
continued conversation with Tom for more security consideration and containerized continuous deployment environments as we try to solve for X in the SDLC equation.